An Iranian committee monitoring the implementation of the nuclear deal has stressed on Tehran's powerful response to the U.S. stance. During a meeting on Monday, the committee chaired by President Hassan Rouhani discussed Washington's recent sanctions against Tehran. The committee noted that the U.S. sanctions clearly violate Washington's obligations under the 2015 landmark nuclear deal. It stressed on the necessary necessity rather, of a strong, appropriate and intelligent response to the measure. The committee also made uh, some decisions in reaction to U.S. provocative measures, which will be handed over to Iran's foreign ministry and the International Atomic Energy Agency. Last week, the U.S. Congress approved fresh sanctions against Iran over its missile program. Let's speak to Sierra Flounder. She's a co-director of International Action Center, and she joins us via Skype from New York. Many thanks for joining us here on Press TV, Ms. Flounder. So as you just heard, Iran is not happy about the U.S. not living up to its obligations of the JCPOA. How dangerous territories do you think are we entering now? Well, very dangerous, and I think every country in the world uh, has got to be very concerned about this and the people in the U.S. It's a complete violation, uh, and the latest uh, congressional bill passed with both full Democratic and Republican uh, support. The, the vote was an amazing 419 to 3. It followed a Senate vote a month before, which was 98 to 2. This means there's bipartisan support. It had support in the U.S. media, and it is criminal, illegal, an escalation, uh, and a violation of the agreements that were signed. It's, it's imposing a new round of sanctions on Iran, on Russia, and on People's Korea. Right. So, uh, Ms. Founders, it seems that the U.S. is not very concerned about uh, Iran's reactions or the fact that it does... Uh, put the JCPOA in that danger, uh, danger zone, that is. Why do you think that is? Do you think that the U.S. doesn't understand the significance of this nuclear agreement? Well, I think it understands the significance very well, but this is a capitalist system in crisis. It's now a big oil exporter, and this is a, a, a desperate an effort to shut down uh, gas and oil from other countries. And so they're very threatened by the um, Nord Stream 2 uh, pipeline uh, coming from Russia and efforts to shut that down and shut the funding for it down. And also Iran's uh, oil exports to Europe are at pre-sanctions level and they want to try to shut that down. Completely criminal activity. Uh, and no basis for it in law, as many countries are reminding them, and a number of countries are considering uh, activity in response. Uh, so it's very d dangerous waters, yes. Right, Ms. Founders, Founders, though, Founders, do you think that uh, the European allies of the United States have done enough to convince it to remain within the parameters of the JCPOA, to honor its obligations. Do you think they've been um, pressuring the U.S. to ensure that this uh, agreement continues to stay intact? Uh, no, they're not doing enough, and they, they have to do more because they are both uh, economic rivals and collaborators in the past on sanctions. So they're furious at the new round of sanctions because in a business way it hurts them, but they've gone along with past sanctions and been part of the enforcement of those sanctions. But now, now they see that they themselves may be targeted as rivals. And the U.S. is, is trying to impose through artificial uh, uh, means uh, their oil sales and liquefied natural gas on the world by cutting off other sources completely outrageous and highly dangerous activity. And before I let you go, of course, um, let's not forget that, uh, as you've just mentioned too, that this is a very dangerous territory. However, at the same time, it does raise more questions about whether the U.S. can be considered as a trustworthy negotiating partner, be it for Iran or any other country in the world. Well, the U.S. has never been a trustworthy negotiating partner. They pride themselves on having violated every treaty they've ever signed. And this goes back to the wars against indigenous people in the U.S. So 
they're not a trustworthy partner. They're a ruthless uh, competitor with the rest of the world, and they maintain their dominant position by attempting to strangle the economy of other nations. So it's a big problem in the world, uh, and I can certainly hope that organized uh, activity can push this more back into line. But that's um, that we have to. It has to be stronger than just hope. There has okay. to be unified action against this criminal activity. Okay, let's see you there for now. That's Sarah Flanders, co-director of the International Action Center, joining us via Skype from New York.